सहनो सहनो भुन सह शिवसमारंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवतन पुनः समस्त जनकल्याणे निरत करुणा नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागी यो मवत्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम दक्षिणामूर्त नम दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यम निजातर्गत पश्यन्नात्मया बहिवो भौत यथा निद्रया यक्षाते प्रबोध समये स्वात्मा 
तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इदम श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवांकुरो जगदीदर्विकन कलकलन वैचित्रचित्रीकृत मयावीव विजृंभयी महायोगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इदम श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त स्फुण सदात्मकमसत्कल्थक भासते साक्षात्मसी वेदवचसा यो बोधयश्रिता यात्मेन पुनरावृत्तिर्भवांभो निध तस्मगुमूर्त नम इदम श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त नानाछिद्रगटोदरस्थितीप्रभास्वर ज्ञानमचुराण द्वारा बहिस्पंदते after having analyzed the nature of the self as sat and chit and not some deham prana or something now the analysis is taken up to prove to establish that the self exists in all the three states we have no problem as far as the dream and waking is concerned because we experience sat and chit but the problem comes during deep sleep so that topic is taken up so what is said here there is an experience of deep sleep also how do we experience it sanmatra प्राक्वापसम वॉट इज द प्रूफ दैट इवन इन डीप स्लीप द ईगो इज कनेक्टेड टू द माइंड वॉट इज द प्रूफ 
we can be woken up so anything happening to the body anything shocking happening to the senses it awakens the mind and the mind awakens the ego so therefore there is a connection between mind and the ego so therefore if a disturbance can wake up the ego if the disturbance can be registered by the mind and wake up the ego so that means there is a connection so therefore the resting of the mind also must be experienced by the ego but now this experience is not a conscious experience why because ego is in its unmanifest form not in the active form so therefore the experience also must be happening in an unmanifest way unmanifest mind is resting unmanifest ego is also resting and so therefore the whole experience must be happening in a very unmanifest way so therefore too much of analysis is not possible there you can't analyze the state of deep sleep in deep sleep because the ego is not available in its full glory there is only san matra in its minimum existence because resting is the most important function of sleep so because resting is the most important function all the activities are suspended so bhagwan says after waking up there is this experience i slept well so this shows that there is a presence of the ego and therefore therefore what is the conclusion conclusion is the self is present in deep sleep also right now the next verse is ha there is one term called pratyabhitnya here prak aswapsam iti prabodha samaye yaf pratyabhitnyayate what is pratyabhitnya recollection now what does it mean how do i know that this experiencer is the same in all the three states maybe the experience is different 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 so let us assume that in the dream state you have a body let us say it is b1 in the dream the body you have is b1 in the dream the mind you have is let us say m1 and this b1 m1 is being aware by a consciousness say c1 so c1 is aware of b1 and m1 so in the dream let us say b1 m1 c1 i am aware of a dream body i am aware of a dream mind this me who is aware let us say it is c1 so b1 m1 c1 when i wake up now i am aware of the waking body let us say it is b2 i am aware of my waking mind it is m2 i am aware this awareness let us say it is c2 so is b1 equal to b2 is b1 equal to b2 no dream body is different in the dream you are doing so many things but waking body is lying down on the bed so b1 is not equal to b2 is m1 equal to m2 no in the dream you are going through various experiences identifying with a different body remember your 
individuality is totally different your understanding everything is totally different there right so the mind is also different your understanding is different whereas what about this waking state that mind is silent there as far as waking from the standpoint of the waking so m1 is different from m2 what about consciousness is c1 equal to c2 see m2 is which m2 after waking up okay so m1 is not equal to m2 what about c1 and c2 ha ah, i was aware of the dream b1 m1 now i am aware of the waking b2 m2 is this awareness same yes how do you know i know it because the one who experienced b1 m1 is the very same one who is experiencing now b2 m2 so the experiencer of the past is the recollector in the present if these two were different will i be able to recollect no recollection is impossible if c1 were to be different from c2 because experience was happening to c1 how will c2 know what has happened to c1 so c2 is able to able to recollect the experience of c1 shows that c2 itself is c1 this is called as pratyabhitnya so therefore we prove c1 must be equal to c2 therefore it is the same consciousness which is present both in the dream and in the waking consciousness is the same bodies are changing minds are changing different states are changing fine but the awareness in the light of which these states are experienced this awareness is the same so the same logic is applied to the deep sleep also the awareness is the same i slept well who is aware that very same person who was aware in the deep sleep is now recollecting that experience now in the waking state so therefore consciousness is the same therefore therefore consciousness is something which has nothing to do with the three states of mind mental states will change but consciousness the underlying truth the substratum the support for these states it is the same three avasthasu yat tishthati tat sat sat also has a meaning of truth sat is existence also sat is truth also right so now in different stages also it is the same that is proved in the next verse let us chant the next verse page number 86 बाल्यादिष्वपि जाग्रदादिषु तथा सर्वास्वस्थास्वपि व्यावृत्तास्वनुवर्तमानमहमिति अंतस्फुर सदा व्यावृत्तास्वनुवर्तमानमहमित 
ಅತ್ಯಂತಸ್ಫುರ ಸದಾ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರಕಟೀಕರೋತಿ ಭಜತ ಯೋ ಮುದ್ರಯ ಭದ್ರಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮ ಇದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಬಾಲ್ಯಾಶ್ವಿ ಜಾಗೃದಿಷು ತಸ್ವಸ್ಥಾಸ್ವಿ ವ್ಯಾವೃತ್ತಸ್ವನುವರ್ತಮಸ್ಫುರ ಸದಾ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರಕಟೀಕರೋತಿ ಭಜತ ಯೋ ಮುದ್ರಯ ಭದ್ರಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮ ಇದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಎಸ್ ಸದಾ ಅಂತ ಸ್ಫುರತ ಸ್ಫುರಂತ ಸದಾ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ಫುರಂತ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಶೈನಿಂಗ್ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ is all the time shining inside sada antah sfurantam as what aham iti as i i i i am i am i am is constantly shining anuvartamanam it is ever present anuvartamanam ever present ever present in the present <laughs> vartamanam means what in the present vartamana kala means what present tense anuvartamanam which is following the present anu means to follow which always follows the present meaning ever present in the present mm. ಅನುವರ್ತಮಾನ ಎವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಾಲ್ಯಾದಿಷು ಬಾಲ್ಯ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ಹುಡ್ ಯೂತ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟೀನೇಜ್ ಯೂತ್ ಮಿಡಿಲ್ ಏಜ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಏಜ್ ಬಾಲ್ಯಾದಿಷು ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಎಸ್ ವಾಟ್ aham iti aham iti what is the proof aham is something which is experienced by all understanding of aham may be different but aham is there isn't it we may think that it is deham pranam etc but actually it is supreme lord only as sachidanand ಬಾಲ್ಯಾಷು ಜಾಗೃತ್ ಆದಿಷು ಜಾಗೃತ್ ಆದಿಷು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಜಾಗೃತ್ ಸ್ವಪ್ನ ಸುಷುಪ್ತಿ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ನಾವು ಅಗೇನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಬಾಲ್ಯ ಅವಸ್ಥ ಬಾಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಎಮ್ ಒನ್ ವೃದ್ಧಾವಸ್ಥ body is different they say that body changes every 7 you no know, years or something every cell is replaced by a new cell so entire body is completely replaced by a new body in 7 to 10 years so b1 and b2 completely different what about m1 and m2 completely different our understanding our emotions philosophies everything changes so b1 is different from b2 m1 is different from m2 what about c1 c2 same how do you know pratyabhijna the ability to recollect 
in my childhood i did such 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 thing okay in my childhood how do you know because that bm b and m both are different b and m were different but i was the same who were you then i the experiencer i the knower i that consciousness principle that is me so therefore i was there when that was happening in that body that very same i is now recollecting what has happened in the past so what does it mean aham iti sada antas purantam this aham is not changing everything is changing so what does it mean the aham is eternal what is the nature of aham mrutam or amrutam amrutam it is immortal because even while living there is no change happening in i changes are happening in the body but there is no change happening in the real i so therefore we can extend the logic what is the logic even when the body falls dead aham will not change yes or no yes because while living also body is dying every moment body is dying even when the body is dying aham is not affected so therefore finally when the body dies aham should not be affected correct balyadishu api jagrudadishu tatha sarvasu avasthasu api sarvasu avasthasu in whatever be the avastha in different different ways anta sada sfurantam aham iti so is god far away from us no is he near to us no <laughs> because near also means distance <laughs> he is we should say so near that he is you only tatvam there is no distance at all but yes bhagwan shankar acharya ji says in commentary those people who are impure hearted unfit bhagwan is very 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 far but those who have a pure heart bhagwan is a very self nearer than the nearest even your life breath is far away compared to god right antasfurantam sada so what is the mistake we have been doing from the beginningless past ignoring this god ignoring him why because not knowing why not knowing because we never came to satsang why we never came to satsang because we thought there are so many other important things in life to be done <laughs> we were so busy with unimportant things that the most important thing gone and in the old age when we are busy with this important thing our children are busy with all unimportant things <laughs> <laughs> yes or no there is this bhagwan waiting for us with full of concern when will my child turn to me he is shining as a very self but what what are we doing absolutely ungrateful absolutely forgetful so for this ingratitude for this forgetfulness the price to be paid is imprisonment what is imprisonment imprisoning in this bmi body mind intellect 
the infinite imprisoned in this finite bmi is life right so be free from this that is liberation get liberated from this prison how स्वात्मानं प्रकटीकरोति भजताम यो मुद्रया भद्रया हियर कम्स दक्षिणामूर्ति भद्रया मुद्रया व्हाट इज दैट भद्र मुद्रा भद्र मींस ऑस्पिशियस ऑस्पिशियस मुद्रा विद दिस ऑस्पिशियस मुद्रा व्हाट इज दक्षिणामूर्ति डूइंग स्व आत्मानं प्रकटीकरोति he is revealing to us our true self with this chin mudra bhagwan is revealing our true self so what is the message of bhagwan you are miserable the misery is because now you are identified with the three what is this three jagrat swapna sushupti जागृत स्वप्न सुशुक्ति और वट हाँ स्थूल सूक्ष्म कारण शरीर बी एम आई और द थ्री गुणास सो नाउ वी आर फुल्ली अटैच टू दिस सपरेट युअर सेल फ्रॉम दिस थ्री बिकम वन विथ दैट अहम इन यू that consciousness in you that is a message choice is yours free yourself this is the purpose of life there is no other purpose of life education job children grandchildren madhuve munji that is not there is a higher purpose you have come for that fulfill all your responsibility but that goal should not be forgotten you are doing everything for a purpose responsibility should be fulfilled in such a way that it purifies the mind that is the only purpose of fulfilling the responsibility we are put into this what you call environment of responsibilities only to purify the mind चित्तस्य शुद्धये कर्म कर्म इज मेंट फॉर चित्त शुद्धि अलोन सो दैट विथ दिस चित्त शुद्धि आई विल बिकम अधिकारी फॉर नॉलेज आई बिकम फिट सो दैट आई विल नॉट हैव द डिफेक्ट्स ऑफ स्त्री बाल अंध एंड जड़ टू ओवरकम दीज डिफेक्ट्स कर्म शुड बी डन and with this chitta shuddhi i become fit for gaining this knowledge so this way intelligently live your life with a noble purpose with a noble goal there is a great grand noble auspicious goal in life don't forget this always remind yourself of this this is a message of bhagwan to us how does he give this message chin mudra bhadraya mudraya most auspicious why is it most auspicious because it takes you to that state of auspiciousness in you that which is infinite that which is blissful that which is immortal that which is free from all kinds of limitation that state is what is called as state of auspiciousness it is possible to attain many have attained you also can attain right desire this don't desire anything else give a direction to your life let this be your noble direction noble goal right but what is our condition bhagwan my this finger is stuck with the middle finger 
as though somebody has put some silo tape you are separating it i am not able to separate bhagwan what to do <laughs> i am stuck there i want to separate but i am not so now bhagwan is going to give the reason why you are stuck there why we are stuck to this bmi why we are stuck with this gross subtle causal bodies so next one is the sadhana is the what you call corrective measures to be done so that this chin mudra is possible not only by the finger but in reality also so verse number 8 page number 93 पश्यति स्वस्वामी संबंधत शिष्याचार्यतया तथैव पितृपुत्राध्यात्मना भेदत तथैव पितृपुत्राध्यात्मना भेदत स्वने जागृतिवायश पुषो माया परिभ्रामित तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त विश्व पश्यति कार्यकारणतया स्वस्वामी संबंधत शिष्याचार्यतया तथैव पितृपुत्राध्यात्मना भेदत स्वने जागृतिवायश पुषो माया परिभ्रामित तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इद श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त यस सो द एडवाइज इज दर इज दिस अहम विच इज शाइनिंग इन यू विच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम बाल्यादिषु विच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम jagrat adishu that aham is what the thumb the thumb is that aham balya adishu jagrat adishu sarvasu avasthasu what are they the three finger right so this is the pft this is the bmi what is this om om this is om this is the bmi this is the pft so pft has to become one with o oh. so now here there is one more term in verse number 7 vyavrtasu it is said there vyavrtasu anuvartamanam what is vyavrtasu that which is repeating again and again hmm? so these avasthas are something which repeats again and again every day it repeats every lifetime it repeats that's why the term vyavrutas means all the time it is there not in one lifetime in all the three states in all the stages in all lifetimes vyavrutas it is ever present so shift your attention to the self in you but what is the obstacle so now here you see verse number 8 prostration unto dakshinamurti who is he the deluded one <laughs> the one who is appearing deluded now so every jeevatma is none other than dakshinamurti only so what is his condition now maya paribhramitah ya purushah what is his condition 
maya paribhramitah totally deluded by maya where is that delusion prominently present swapne jagrati va either in swapna or in jagrat avastha this delusion is clearly seen what is the expression of this delusion vishwam pasyati vishva darshanam is the indication of ha maya vishwam pasyati right he has created a vishwam how did he create a vishwam swa ichchaya don't forget this swa ichchaya vishwam pasyati so in swapna also there is vishwam in jagrat avastha also there is vishwam and in both these cases the cause of vishwam is none other than me myself my own desires how do these desires express so now there are two types of desires one is a desire at the intellect level the other is the desire at the mind level vishwam pasyati what is the cause karya karanataya because of karya karana karya karana means what cause effect so this is the obstacle at the intellect level karya karana what is the obstacle at the mind level attachment to people we get attached to people swa swami sambandhatah due to the sambandha attachment with one's own swami shishya acharyataya attachment to one's own shishya or one's own acharya the attachment tathaiva pitra putra so these attachments are of various kinds example the attachment of father and son pitra putra aadi so in that aadi we have to understand all the other attachments also and this way atmana bhedatah i consider myself to be different from the other actually there is only one self but then i don't want that self i want that self to be seen in a particular way in a particular relationship and therefore the cosmic mind is projecting that particular relationship right so first let us see this you know bandhana due to intellect what is the intellect desiring it is constantly doing this cause hunting this cause hunting is a trap you are seeing the world you have a desire to know more and more about the world when you have a desire to know more and more about the world what do you do you start this cause effect relationship and then you go so busy with the world you are so fascinated by vaichitra chitrikritam vishwam <laughs> right so there is a desire to know about the world so you come back to the world any desire has to be fulfilled right in the pursuit of searching for happiness without the guidance of the scriptures we misunderstood that improving the world is a way to happiness so therefore then intellect started busy with trying different ways and means to improve the world they observed that anything which rolls moves faster so wheel was invented so all the transportation system came who created <laughs> intellect <laughs> isn't it they saw that the ash is going up so then they found there is a cause effect why is the ash going up 
so they found out a reason and this aeroplane was invented <laughs> yes or no cause effect cause effect you observe the cause you observe the effect and go to the cause you learn something new you are fascinated you are busy in the process what is forgotten aham is forgotten what became important idam became important at the time of death what are you thinking now throughout your life you are busy with idam so at the time of death also your thoughts were related to idam how can i fly better gone dead so next birth <laughs> where will be born desire wise to fly fly better so he will be born in a family where you know like an engineer or a scientist how to fly better so he will be creating some machines designs etc at the time of death what is your last desire that will decide your next birth hmm. right hmm. our own desires are deciding our future our past decided our present our present is constantly designing chiseling the future so there is a problem with this intellect karya karana karya karana i am stuck in this cause effect i am not trying to come out of it i am not going to get into the substratum now this karya karana is infinite remember it has no beginning it has no end where did this bangle come from earlier it was a necklace where did that necklace come from earlier it was something else now in the process you have forgotten that it is gold <laughs> you understood the substratum is forgotten we are busy with nama roopa this is the trap of the intellect intellectual trap you are busy with the names and forms you forget in the process the substratum remaining in the problem you cannot solve the problem remaining in the dream you can never understand the dream come out of the dream so that is a hint given here come out of this kari karana अन्यत्र धर्मात अन्यत्र धर्मात अन्यत्र अस्मात कृता कृतात अन्यत्र भूताच्च भव्याच्च यो यत् पश्यति तद् वद हुस क्वेश्चन नचिकेता क्वेश्चन टेल मी दैट व्हिच इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कॉज एंड इफेक्ट tell me that which is different from dharma adharma there is something which is different from this tell me that which is different from past present and future there is something which is giving existence to that tell me that that was a question of nachiketa right this is a mistake done by all scientists in the world they are so busy with the observed phenomenon that they have forgotten that there is an observer different from the observed they are all busy with only the observed things observer they have taken it for granted this is a mistake observer is forgotten they are busy with the observed in the observed also you are only busy with cause effect cause effect cause effect relationship so you are not able to come out of it observer is neither the cause nor the effect observer is the support of both cause and effect so what is dakshinamurti telling here shift your attention from cause effect find out what is the substratum the observer this is how to this is the way to come out of 
this intellectual trap what is a mental trap attachment we are so attached to our near and dear ones husband wife pita pit putra mother child father son so many relationships attachment means what attachment means love attachment means desire so what is the mind saying i want this person i want this person this relationship should continue and with this desire the fellow dies <laughs> so what should happen he is asking for the relationship so therefore that other person comes in somewhere or the other in the next birth also correct why is it coming it's not an accident you are asking for it so any attachment beware you are asking for rebirth any attachment that's why here the holiest of relationship which one shishya acharyataya that also is included here if you get attached to a particular form no for sure you are going to be reborn it may be the form of your acharya only because that is also founded on falsity illusion guru is telling you are the self you are the self you are the self yes guru i understood you are the body you are the body you are the body <laughs> you get attached to the body of the guru finished guru is screaming we are the self shishya is very clear we are the body <laughs> you understand any forgetfulness of god is an unpardonable punishment is an unpardonable sin which has to be punished right even the attachment to the form of guru cannot be accepted right so in and through guru if you are seeing god there is no problem but then attachment to the body of the guru is not accepted but then in our scriptures this is allowed for some time attachment to the form of the guru this also has to be understood why because this attachment to guru puts an end to all other attachment it is like taking one thorn and removing all thorns and finally dropping that thorn also so this way attachment to guru is helpful that is why the shishyas as brahmacharis they keep one shikha they shave everything meaning no attachment to anyone but except attachment to guru that attachment to guru is the shikha and finally that also is shaved off during sanyas they are all symbolic right any desire for worldly relationship will lead to what you call because that's what you are asking god i don't want you i want this relationship god says fine if this is what you want i'll give you that the cosmic mind projects that relationship it creates an environment so that you can interact with such a person in such a relationship right beware is a point why because they are all maya only maya paribhramitah that term is there completely deluded by maya we become so caught up in relationship this relationship becomes the highest priority in our life to such an extent that even god is forgotten even that lord who gave this relationship even he is forgotten hmm. 
You become busy with creation that the creator himself is forgotten. What is this act called? Act of ingratitude. The one who has given you something, you forget him. You are busy with that toy. Father gives a toy to the child. Now the child wants only the toy, not the father. (laughs) Which father will like it? Which mother will like it? Isn't it? That's why in Bible it is said, Bhagavan says, I am a jealous God. What a sweet expression. I am a jealous God. I don't want my children to get attached to anything other than me. Should love only me. I become jealous when my children love somebody else. What a beautiful expression, you know. I am a jealous God. So don't make Bhagavan jealous. <laughs> right. See, what else can Bhagavan do? He is there as your very self. So you don't have to do anything to experience presence. He is always there in your heart, shining every moment. In all the three states he is there. Waiting, 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 waiting. How long he has been waiting now? Anadikala. We have been making him wait from the beginningless time. And what is our complaint? God, why are you not giving darshan to me? <laughs> what else can I do? I am there as your very self. Isn't it? So anyone who is born in this world is a sinner. This is called sinner. That's why Bible called all of us as sinner. It is right. What is a sin? Forgetfulness of God is sin. Forgetting our creator is indeed a sin. But how do we forget? By giving priority to so many other things. By so many other relationships. By becoming busy with so many unwanted things. You will always find a person who has forgotten God, a person who has become busy with the world, he will die empty, he will die hollow, he will die miserable. Guaranteed. Maya ke jo bane pujari, akhir wo kangal hue. Those who became, those who worshipped Maya, finally they become a pauper. That's the meaning. It's fact. We are busy trying to put adding zeros in our life, but we have forgotten the most important thing. What is it? Putting one in the beginning. (laughs) This one is God. Hmm? Collecting all this worldly treasure is Putting zeros. Right. Hmm. So therefore, at the seat of meditation, when you are shifting your attention to the self, you must keep all this in mind. So when your attention is shifted to the self, first of all, your heart should be filled with love, filled with gratitude. No, Vedantic meditation should not become a dry meditation. When there is no love in the heart, then that meditation becomes a dry meditation. This is this this juice of devotion. Your heart should be soaked in that, what do you call? in that emotion of devotion, then you must turn your attention to the self. Then you must feel his presence. Then that becomes a fulfilling experience. Devotion is always a fulfilling experience. 
at least in those rare moments you feel that yes now there is nothing to be achieved so these are the indications that we are in the right track in fact it is bhagwan himself who is guiding us from within yes my child yes the path is right come on this is the way so that sense of fulfillment experience in some rare moments of meditation they are all the inspiration from the divine the guidance from the divine you see small children when they walk how do the parents say come 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 the child is still struggling to walk what what will the mother do she will not hold she will just she is ready just to hold is it it in the same way so actually we don't have the qualification but now and then the lord gives that joy the sense of fulfillment once in a while though we don't deserve it he gives it why to inspire us to encourage us to walk this path right so meditation should continue whether we succeed or not because so many things uh, becomes clear we should always try to shift the attention to the self with all this knowledge now why are we studying all this see a person who has never studied he is also experiencing i but will he have that reverence and devotion towards the i no because he doesn't know what this i is he doesn't know what this consciousness is but when we study you know the greatness of consciousness with this feeling in mind with this reverence towards this presence conscious presence you must shift your attention hmm? then the meditation becomes very fulfilling that's why all this study intellect should have the right understanding of what it is meditating upon just by closing your eyes and sitting that is not meditation study is essential because intellect should know the glory of the self the glory of this consciousness so therefore study should continue